Welcome into the Fixers. I'm Jeremy Kahn from 105.7 The Fan with the Scott Garso Show. Really excited about this. Uh, I think this is pretty cool, especially me being a dad that have kids that play sports and just talking about sports injuries. Today we're joined by Dr. Ralph Zaid, Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland, a member of the Centers for Advanced Orthopedics. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you. Thanks Pleasure. for having me. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I'm an orthopedic sports specialist uh, with uh, Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland. Yeah, so interesting enough, you know, in talking to you, I know you've worked with the Wizards, the Ravens, but more importantly, you're not just about superstar athletes. You work with everyday people just like me. Yeah, so uh, in my training, I did have some um, interaction with the Ravens and the Wizards, um, but, uh, you know, it most of the people that I see on every day are just, you know, people that hurt their shoulders or their hips or their knees, whether it's, you know, playing uh, weekend warrior type uh, or, or, you know, like uh, younger kids playing soccer or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm the weekend warrior. and I know there's a lot of guys out there just like me. I talk to them every weekend. I'm constantly giving up things and taking on new sports. So I'm sure you see a lot of guys just like myself. But what are you primarily seeing? Is it a lot of knees, uh, ankles? I mean, is it anything really that, that you're working on? Um, so it is a little bit all over the place, I guess, with people that come in. I, I focus primarily on, I guess you could say, shoulders, hips, and knees. Mm -hmm. um, commonly known things would be, for example, ACL tears or rotator cuff tears, you know, things you often see in the news, for example. And uh, I think the nice thing about doing a sports fellowship and working with all those different levels of play is I can really try to figure out, you know, specifically based on your age and your demands and what you like to do, the best treatment option for you. I wanted to ask you about hips because it's something that we were discussing, um, you know, when you talk about some of the hip injuries, we saw a very significant one with Dennis Pitta here with the Baltimore Ravens, but uh, I know you see a wide variety of different injuries when it involves the hip. So that's true. Um, hip arthroscopy or a hip scope, uh, as, as uh, people kind of commonly know it, is a little bit more of a, of a recent uh, surgery in, uh, in um, sports surgery. Is this something we saw with A-Rod? It, it did. He actually had two uh, uh, labral tears of his hips and two hip surgeries. Um, it's uh, sort of a minimally invasive way to treat um, people that have labral tears uh, of their hip. I think we actually have uh, a couple images up here. Uh, so if you, if you look up there, that's a normal hip. Uh, you can see it's kind of like a ball in a socket um, where it says the femur and the femoral head on the left there, that's like the ball. And then the socket is where it says the acetabulum. And you can see around it, it has kind of like a gasket. That's called the labrum. And so um, for different reasons, sometimes you can tear that. Um, and he might not even be like a discrete injury, just something that you know, people notice their hips bothering them. And before, you know, even as of 20 years ago, you'd have to have this big surgery if you're going to do anything about it, where you open the whole thing up to fix it, and it's a, it was a huge deal. And now we're starting to be able to do these surgeries more minimally invasive, just with some portals, uh, little holes like you'd have with your shoulder or your knee uh, to fix it. I'm surprised I didn't wind up in the same field. So when I had my He-Man figures when I was a kid, and I'd pull the legs off of them and have to plug it back into Ram Man, you know, it was the same thing, the little ball and socket. Yeah, you work. were probably tearing his labrum every time you did that. So, Doc, tell me the difference between a, a partial or a full knee replacement and why would someone need one? That's a good question. A lot of people ask that. Um, if you look at this diagram here, you can see the knee, that's a normal knee, has three different areas, uh, your inside or medial, your outside or lateral, and the part under your kneecap, and each of those can get worn out. Uh, so sometimes, uh, if you go to the next slide, people uh, wear out just the inside of their knee. As you can see there, the cartilage is all worn out. And so in that case, we can replace just that part, if that's where they're having pain, uh, as you can see on the right, um, and that's called a partial knee replacement. Um, it's a little bit quicker of a recovery, a little less pain usually. So if we can do it, um, it you know, it's a good option. Uh, it's a little easier to, to fix down the line if they develop more arthritis. But sometimes people come in, uh, and you know, this is usually after they've had a, a long uh, lifetime of uh, pounding on their knees, whether that's work or sports, um, and uh, they can wear out all of the compartments of their knee, or both sides at least, and then they'll get a full knee replacement. So what's the chances if you have a partial that you'd end up needing a full? Or like if the surgery goes well, it, it, would you be fine with just the partial? So that's a good question. It, it varies from person to person. Um, a lot of times we try to go more towards a partial knee replacement in younger people, maybe in their 50s or 60s. Um, 
if they only have wear on one part of their knee. Um, sometimes they can go the rest of their life with that. Uh, usually we, we like to at least get about 10 years out of a partial knee replacement, um, but it is a relatively less difficult surgery to convert that to a full knee replacement down the line than if you do a full knee replacement starting out. We had the discussion about former Raven Michael McCrary, big for the Super Bowl run here in Baltimore, and I know he had both of his knees replaced and, um, you know, trying to get back and, I mean, you, these football players, they, it's held to their knees and, and the pressure they put on themselves and trying to stay out there and play. So, uh, you know, people can kind of relate, I guess, to, to what Michael's going through if you've had that knee replacement surgery. If everything goes really well and you're not pounding on it too much afterwards, um, you know, people have a pretty good result actually and, and it really feels good to get rid of that arthritis pain. Um, but, you know, some people in that, in that situation really put a lot of pressure on their knees and really have had a lot of wear and uh, it can be difficult sometimes but if need be you can always go back in and change things if you need to. Well let me ask you this because this is an interesting question at least for me for my sake because I always wonder about injuries that you have where you don't feel pain. Typically like you know an ACL injury you don't know when it's fully healed unless the doctor's telling you to go back out and play and we've seen a lot of athletes or people in general just go back to their regular work schedule because it feels okay. I almost believe sometimes pain's a good thing to let you know it's still not healed or it's in the healing process. You're exactly right. You know, after, especially in the younger population, uh, after, you know, they get their surgery done and they're a month or two out, they think you're the greatest, they feel great, they want to go back to doing it, uh, doing what they were doing. And, you know, it takes at least 18 months for your ACL to actually sort of, um, become your own type of ligament. So it's weaker, um, initially than the original ACL that you had in there. Um, and so, you know, there's, a, there's a, a very good chance you could re-tear it if you're not careful, if you're not following the, you know, physical therapist, um, if you try to go back in and do things too early. That's a great question. So just piggybacking off of the ACL injury, so my son had a partial tear in his ACL and he bruised his meniscus. And we saw two separate doctors and both of them were fantastic in dealing with him and trying to figure out what direction he goes in. We took four months off for the partial tear, went through physical therapy for three of those months. He just came back and started playing. What are your thoughts on, you know, those partial tears versus a full ACL tear? Because in my mind, I was so concerned with him coming back and playing with the knee brace because they don't heal on the, their own, right? So that's actually a new kind of area we're looking back into um, with ACL tears specifically and the possibility of doing things like ACL repairs instead of reconstructing them where we take the ligament from somewhere else. Uh, and if it's a certain type of tear where it's just off the bone, sometimes we can repair it and have it heal back or that's sort of some ongoing research right now. Usually we look at stability um, more than anything as to how we think we should treat it. So if your MRI shows you know, a questionable tear, but your knee's nice and stable, we'd probably hold off doing surgery because we could always make things worse. And in that case, it seems like your knee's still working. And that was kind of the route of what we were dealing with. And uh, I know each parent's different when it's with their kids, or even if it's someone else out there that had their own ACL tear because the interesting thing with my son is that he still had the growth plate going, and um, they said if they did the surgery and he had to have ACL repair, that they would have to take from his hamstring instead of the patella, which, like, all this stuff's new to me, and, and medicine is getting better and better each and every year, and it's just strange to hear these things, because we would always hear, oh, you tore your ACL, you're going to be out for an entire year, and, um, you know, they're going to have to get a cadaver, and, like, there's so many different aspects of medicine right now. Um, the hamstring surgery was interesting. I never even knew about that. So that's true, and, and that's a whole big topic that you could dive into with uh, kids that have ACL tears and, uh, and all different ways you can treat them. And that's, that's a concern because their growth plates are open and there's ways you can try to avoid it, uh, avoid uh, uh, drilling through the growth plate when you're doing the surgery. Um, and, and that's actually kind of a newer concern nowadays because kids are playing sports and you know are playing year round and are being you know so much more intense at so many younger ages that they're getting injuries younger and younger than than you know 50 years ago. Yeah, he's back to playing now. He's been playing for about three weeks and. So far, so good, but every time he falls, I, I'm, I'm just holding I mean, it scares the hell out of me. So, um, but, you know, and then we're just hoping, obviously, he's playing with a knee brace right now uh, that it holds up. But, you know, anybody that's having these injuries, he, nobody wishes it, but you're trying to find the right person 
to, to really kind of walk you through this and take you through the right process, and that's where guys like you come in. Yeah, and we're always happy to see you. Let's touch on uh, shoulders. Uh, I know elbows fall into this category as well as far as injuries with sports, a lot of throwing and, and so many different sports. Uh, what are the most common things that you see? Uh, so I think it kind of depends on the age of the person, um, but uh, we see a lot of, especially in shoulders, um, um, labral tears, especially in the younger population, uh, all the way up to rotator cuff tears as you get a little bit older. Um, those are probably sort of the most common types of things we see. And it's just funny, I feel like everybody in my family's had an injury because I've talked to you and we've gone through everybody in my family. My older brother, I think he's had eight or nine rotator cuff surgeries. Oh, wow. Uh, he's had so many problems. He played baseball. He's a hunter, so bow hunting, obviously pulling back. He's just thankful that he can continue to hunt. But um, he's had so many surgeries on that shoulder. And at one point, he was dealt. He couldn't even lift his arm up, uh, you know, at, at a certain range, and he had to stay in this cast. It was it was pretty interesting to see like what he was going through, and then the recovery time for that as well. Rotator cuff surgery uh, can be a little bit of a, a painful recovery sometimes, but usually people are pretty happy in the end because they get a lot of their function back. And um, you know, they can occur because you fall, you know, uh, shoveling the snow or, you know, playing sports, or sometimes they occur and a lot of people don't even know how they happen. Um, but uh, uh, usually uh, when people start to get pain at night, that's when they really come in because they need to take care of it. One of the things you and I discussed a little bit was, so we talked about Shohei Otani, the pitcher for the Angels, hitter for the Angels too, rookie sensation. Uh, kind of strange to see a guy doing both, but he had the UCL injury uh, that happens a ton with pitchers, Tommy John surgery. Um, and I asked you about that as far as seeing it in youth sports. Uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, how often do you see that come across with young kids with that injury? Is it more in adults? So um, it is becoming more of an injury in, in the younger population, uh, especially now, again, you know, because kids are playing uh, sports, they're playing the same sport year round, they're not alternating as much. And, they're and that's playing, not good for them, right? And, they and, and, and that's not as good for them, yeah. And they're, uh, you know, playing younger and younger and on travel teams and such where it's just way more competitive. Um, and it is becoming more of a common injury in the younger population. The one thing, you know, it, it's a relatively specific surgery so you know unless somebody is necessarily going to be coming and playing at a high level uh, as a college athlete or uh, uh, in a professional um, setting you don't really need your ulnar collateral ligament and a lot of times uh, with some therapy and rest it can actually heal up pretty well where you wouldn't notice the injury uh, when kids are younger and their growth plates are open. So yeah, I know high schools have tried to limit how much kids are pitching. Uh, some coaches really set on winning. They'll throw a guy out there too many times or pitch him too many innings or not enough rest. And you mentioned it. Uh, it seems like now in sports, kids have different arm angles that they're throwing at, whether we see it with quarterbacks and all these strange different arm angles. But definitely in baseball, you got your side arms, you got guys that throw three quarters or even change some of their deliveries up depending on the pitch. Mm -hmm. And and that is, you know, I, I think as you get, you know, when you get into the professional level, people do whatever works for them. And, you know, it, it sort of makes sense because that's what they got to do. But uh, when, when the, you're at the younger age and when kids are really starting out, um, you know, paying attention to proper form, trying to avoid things like sidearm pitching, um, I think can, can help to prevent some injuries. So again, if people want to find you, what's the website phone number they can get you at? Uh, it's www.mdbonedocs.com. That's our website. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. Uh, Dr. Ralph Zaid, Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland, a member of the Centers for Advanced Orthopedics. Uh, really appreciate you spending some time with us. And I know it goes for all doctors. You're hoping you never have to see them, but it's nice to know that you have someone you can trust when you do need them. Uh, I'm constantly going through that. I feel like I see a doctor four or five times a year for some stupid injury. But, doctor, thank you so much for joining us. It is The Fixers. We'll be doing a bunch more of these, so stay tuned. Thank you.